Hello and welcome to another edition of The New Crossroads, a podcast where we focus on the Internet of Things, uh, in particular how IoT is changing the way companies do business in Indiana and well beyond. My name is Gary Dick. I'm host of Inside Indiana Business. Pleased to be joined by my co-host, Judy Okenfuss, who is the managing partner at Ice Miller, also the leader of the IoT industry group for the firm as well. Judy, welcome. Thank you. All right, we are very pleased to have a special guest this month, Jamie Lee. Jamie is Vice President of IT and also Chief Information Officer at Wabash National Corporation, one of Indiana's great manufacturing success stories, the largest trailer manufacturer in the United States, also the second largest in the entire world. And uh, Jamie, welcome to the program. Thank you. I'll start off, uh, mm -hmm. lead off with a, kind of a basic question. Uh, we focus on the IoT in this uh, podcast which is new territory for a lot of people. As you look at IoT, kind of that working definition or how you how you look at I, IoT, how do you explain it? Uh, for us at Wabash, you know, we really consider kind of the base, baseline for automation, uh, whether you're looking at the shop floor or in our end product. Uh, in terms of the shop floor, my role uh, is to help the company uh, leverage information technologies, including IoT uh, sort of technologies in automating our lines, whether that's equipment information and, and flow back to databases and servers that provide analytics, that type of thing. Uh, from a um, product perspective, certainly IoT is out there from a performance improvement and you know fleet optimization sort of uh, approach with our end customers. And so, uh, again, my role in the company is to help uh, the company see through that and, and also deploy it, maintain it. Talk a little bit more about your role and that IoT role, because I would assume at many companies, you know, still a new thing, mm -hmm. a new thing, and evolving things. Uh, thing. Talk about your role in the company and how the company uh, kind of views IoT and its importance to the overall success of the company. Well, I think it sees it as a, a, a game changer in terms of um, being able to drive efficiencies, operating performance. Um, really, insight is what what you glean from it because with IoT. Uh, you know, the, as a baseline, you have the ability to capture data, bring it home, uh, correlate it, and really look uh, for causation and problems. Uh, things you might want to go out and solve either on the shop floor or for your end customers. And so uh, we see that as really kind of an open book right now as technology evolves and, and becomes pervasive uh, through our shop floors and also uh, in, in, uh, in our customers' end product. So one of the interesting uses or applications of IoT deals with supply chain management. So how do you see the Internet of Things really affecting supply chain management? Preventive maintenance for sure, um, but really the ability to uh, track product. I know we were discussing it before. Um, the ability to uh, look at product quality uh, in transportation um, and really uh, beyond is it on time. Is, is, it, is it meeting the criteria it's supposed to meet? And that's very important in food uh, and uh, dairy and beverage. Uh, because of recent announcement by the government for a Food and Safety Modernization Act. You know, they're looking for uh, cold refrigerated goods to be a certain temperature and so forth as they're delivered. So having that insight uh, to that shipment and so forth um, is important to our end customers in the supply chain. And, and you pointed to a lot of things in your answer just now. And mm -hmm. one of them you talked about is preventative maintenance which really goes back to big data, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Because part of Internet of Things and the use of all of these sensors is the collection of a lot of data mm -hmm. and the ability to mine that data and use it that's right. in ways that help. And you, you've mentioned preventative maintenance. I'm not sure everyone even understands how that's working. Yeah, no, in, in terms of uh, managing fleets, like uh, the uh, equipment that we you know sell and provide into uh, our customers, there are breakdowns that occur. There are uh, spare parts that are necessary to keep that asset on the road and performing for the business. And so having data feedback on, from the performance of that uh, equipment in the field is very important. You know, companies like John Deere and Caterpillar also uh, enjoy those types of uh, benefits from IoT. Uh, having that data uh, allows them to pull equipment off the road uh, as well as uh, keep it on the road uh, when it's looking at preventing a certain outcome or a certain you know, downtime. And so that's one of the uses of all of this data. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned product tracking. Mm -hmm. And in the food environment, is that another place where, again, that the Internet of Things is allowing us to collect a lot of data and use it in new ways? I think so. If you, if you look at trucking and you look at the last couple decades, a lot of attention has been put on the front end of the, of the vehicle and the tractor itself and the engine. And for the purposes of that, 
uh, have been around fuel and tires and, and you know fuel in particular being one of the largest costs a fleet incurs. Uh, there's more of a shift now focusing on the cargo itself and the trailer itself and how uh, the quality of those goods are arriving, whether the costs are being incurred through insurance claims uh, or just, you know, spoilage and that type of thing. So uh, sensors in, in, in the trailer uh, providing feedback on the performance of that, of the, again, of the quality of the goods going is very important. Yeah, I mentioned, uh, Jamie, that Wabash National is a real success story, and it is. It's transformed itself uh, over the last number of years. You recently uh, recently announced a big acquisition uh, here in the state of Indiana, acquiring uh, Supreme Industries. A deal that is still pending, mm -hmm. uh, the second largest uh, truck body manufacturer in the U.S. What IoT opportunities, as you look at that deal, what IoT opportunities do you, do you see there? So uh, we call that our last mile or final mile uh type of opportunity in that, that space. Uh, the truck bodies that Supreme makes and, 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 and as do we, uh, certainly are, is equipment uh, fueling um, our customers mm -hmm. in that space. I think the IoT, IoT opportunities are actually really undefined at this point. It's kind of wide open. There's so many different types of vehicles now being imagined in the final mile space due to just the breadth and growth of the e-commerce segment. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, you, can, you can Google it, search, and see all sorts of crazy ideas out there. But uh, the uh, final mile is definitely something to be tapped into in terms of IoT. There's going to be economies of scale that are to be leveraged out there. And from what we're seeing from trucking, uh, is long haul segments are becoming shorter and the e-commerce uh, segments are becoming more uh, plentiful. And if you watch Amazon and what they're doing, you can uh, tell that uh, shipments are up and, and uh, single package shipments are up even. So mm -hmm. uh, there will definitely be much needed equipment out there. Because IoT in this particular deal is undefined and, and other deals perhaps as well, does it put added pressure? on you and others of the company to really, you know, to come up with that magic bull and that answer and to really try to leverage IoT to the best extent possible. Yeah, you know, that's one of the challenges our customers see. It, our um, many IT firms are out there trying to take a bite of the apple mm -hmm. and put this sensor on, on your equipment, put this package on the equipment. And, uh, and our customers, you know, are, are being, you know, bifurcated a little bit. I can't go this way, I can't go that way. I'd like one solution, that type of thing. So I, my personal opinion is I imagine it like the TomTom -tom was to the to the car at one point. Mm -hmm. It was up on your dash or up on your window and it eventually became part of the dashboard itself as the uh, you know, original equipment manufacturers would take mm -hmm. that technology in house yeah. and perfect it really mm -hmm. uh, and be able to scale it up at uh, high volume production. Yeah, performance. I'm going to uh, add, ask a quick education question. Mm -hmm. um, your boss, Dick Giramini, the mm -hmm. CEO of the company, has been on our show and mm -hmm. talked about the skills gap and those types of things. And he's he's certainly been um, out front in supporting efforts in the Lafayette area and education. Mm -hmm. As you look at that train, that skilled workforce coming in with the IoT, the technology, the STEM background, any concerns or just general thoughts in terms of the workforce uh, that you see coming in coming into the company? No, absolutely. I think I think there's going to be a need for a cross of engineering type skills, uh, and I'm not sure the K through 12 schools today mm -hmm. are, are teaching mm -hmm. that. I think they're uh, putting in maker spaces and things that are kind of optional club mm -hmm. uh, type of activities. Um, I don't believe that's the case in other countries. Uh, so I think that I think that our schools and, and the education system needs to adapt or adopt really uh, these types of technologies and and dealing with circuit boards and programming techniques. Uh, to pull data and to program mm -hmm. controllers and right. so forth. It's almost like the shop class I uh, used to be when I was in, in mm -hmm. school. Uh, maybe not a lathe but a, mm -hmm. or, 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 or a jigsaw, but, mm -hmm. but uh, something related to IoT and circuitry. Mm -hmm. And I assume along with that, just adding a comment, we're going to need people to understand security mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because part of supply chain management, anytime we add these sensors and we're starting to collect data, we have all the issues with yeah. security, which is a whole other skill we need people trained in, yeah. a large one. No, I, I don't disagree. Um, the uh, the devices themselves, once connected, do pose a risk. I mean, they, we've seen, um, as, as a CIO, I have to study the cybersecurity uh, for the company, uh, but we've seen attacks out on the East Coast that were largely about uh, using IoT-related devices to attack websites and de do a denial of service and that type of thing. Uh, so we're, we're concerned about it, that as well. There has to be ample security techniques applied to these devices. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, yeah, you mentioned that denial of service that happened that actually 
turn, actually shut down some of the big websites yeah. mm. last year on the East Coast, and you know that is not focused solely on supply chain, obviously, IoT. That's across the board with IoT and just an issue we're going to have to wrestle with, I think, across the board. But one thing about supply chain, and one thing I see different, is that now to really have IoT be effective and really change the way supply chain, ma supply chain management works, mm -hmm. Are you going to need to really collaborate across the whole supply chain? Because there's data being collected everywhere along yeah. the chain. I assume part of it now is to pull that data together. Yeah. But is that sort of changing the collaboration and changing the way everyone works together? Uh, I imagine that it will. I imagine that many of uh, the folks that are uh, customers that are going to be leveraging IoT type devices are not going to be able to stay in a silo. And uh, there, there's, there's a concept called blockchain that's out there that you may have heard yep. from uh, John McDonald, I think mm -hmm. he was on the show. Uh, blockchain is, uh, is not here yet necessarily, except for the Bitcoin and so forth, but uh, the blockchain concept will bring companies together. It, it just, it does. It, it li lifts the transaction up off the main systems and puts it out on the internet, uh, hopefully secure, and hopefully to the identity of those that have access to it. Uh, to your earlier point, but uh, if you want to look at uh, blockchain, a good an interesting video is IBM and Maersk, the shipping company, mm -hmm. uh, actually have an interesting uh, YouTube video about how blockchain is going to impact shipping worldwide. I, so I, that kind of plays in our space and is interesting. We, we could talk about blockchain for hours. Mm -hmm. It's a fascinating topic mm -hmm. and what it might do when you have you know, transactions that just occur. You yeah. know, in, in my mind, they're self-effectuating. One occurs, the next thing occurs. And yeah. Who knows how that's going to apply to logistics yeah. and um, supply and chain security. Mm -hmm. and security. It is yeah. a fascinating yeah. topic. Blockchain. But to your point, I think I think uh, suppliers, shippers, and receivers, and so forth, will have to be part of that chain together. Sure. How about uh, opportunities for startups mm -hmm. uh, in trucking technology? There's data out there that shows the trucking-related startups will raise a billion dollars mm -hmm. this year uh, compared to something like 760 million uh, in 2016. Are there opportunities as, as when these types as these types of technologies emerge, opportunities for startups in in trucking technology? Oh, I think so, and, and we actually sit on the back of. Purdue University there mm. in Lafayette, mm -hmm. and so we enjoy access to some of the, the talent there. Uh, in particular, one local company, Datus, uh, is has been working with us on, on shop floor uh, connectivity mm -hmm. to our machines. Some of the machines on the in the manufacturing space are just legacy, you know, type of technology. So how do you get feedback from those machines? Well, they they've got techniques and ways to do that, um, and so we've been successful with a couple of their pilots. Uh, out on the West Coast, uh, Peloton Technology uh, is actually uh, one of uh, partners of ours that's working on our um, uh, Super Truck 2 project for the Department mm -hmm. of Energy uh, with Volvo. Uh, and so that their, um, their activity in platooning and, and long haul trucking to try and get fuel, fuel mm -hmm. efficiency and so forth has been very interesting. And of course there's Uber Freight uh, with the sharing economy and, and matching uh, truckers to um, uh, shipments and so yeah. forth. Very interesting. You, you, you mentioned Purdue, uh, mm -hmm. a real asset, obviously, for the state of Indiana. But uh, talk about, if you will, Wabash National, an Indiana-based company. You mentioned John McDonald from Clear Object mm -hmm. uh, in Fishers, really a leader, a visionary out in the IoT space. As you look at what's going on in the state of Indiana uh, around IoT and state leaders saying this can be a space that we can really, it can be a sweet spot for Indiana, mm -hmm. how does that potentially uh, impact companies like Wabash National? Well, so uh, certainly if, if there were more technology in, in the space, for example, in the infrastructure, mm -hmm. you might have vehicle to infrastructure communications, which you probably heard the federal government, the Department of Transportation talk about is coming. It's something they would like to see for safety perspective, what have you. Um, that might interest uh, our product in terms mm -hmm. of something that we might be able to go and do and, and, and make a marketplace out of. Um, the vehicle, the infrastructure itself, uh, is, is a great investment for the state, um, being the crossroads of America and so forth. Uh, but I believe that IoT in the infrastructure is one of the things that paves the way to smart city as a concept, mm -hmm. uh, where you get into uh, consumer, consumer transportation and so forth. Um, that is, is something also uh, can be leveraged by the city mm -hmm. and the state. Mm -hmm. So you talk about the infrastructure, and I have to ask this question because I look forward to the day we have autonomous vehicles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you talked about platooning, which is you know the trucks being mm -hmm. autonomously and driven close together. How close are we <laughs> to it? 
Uh, I heard an interesting quote the other day, the future is here, it's just not evenly distributed. <laughs> yeah. So we think of the future being here when it's all around us, but uh, I'd say that the autonomy is, is, is there in many mm -hmm. use cases, uh, whether you're Uber in Pittsburgh with uh, self-driving cars running around or, or your Peloton and you're, you're attempting to, uh, to, to platoon and get some autonomy between two almost uh, autonomous trucks um, or your uh, auto, which is a company of, of Uber that actually did do an autonomous, uh, I think it was a beer run um, <laughs> okay. in, in the, in, in, from Colorado, I believe. So, you know, it's, it's, it's closer than it is further away. Mm -hmm. I, I really believe that. Um, but one of the things as consumers is we have to be willing to adopt it to bring it forward faster. And I think companies like Tesla and so forth are probably driving that adoption uh, in their mm -hmm. marketing ways and so forth. Mm -hmm. Do you think the businesses are going to be ready to adopt it on supply chains? I don't, I don't think so. And there, there are some real challenges when it goes to, uh, back to the infrastructure side. Um, if you think about autonomous vehicles, particularly mm -hmm. platooning, you know, there's, um, there's some con uh, space constraints on highways, even just getting off the exit, that type of thing, if you're platooning vehicles and so forth. So there, there's some infrastructure, I'll call it redesign, that needs to occur uh, to be able to leverage autonomy, I think. Make sure I understand platooning. That would be how long on a string of vehicles? Uh, I, I'm be. not sure it's determined at this point, mm -hmm. but uh, we've seen two at this point, I think, demonstrated. But people are thinking a much longer oh, yeah. string of vehicles going down the highways. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine the benefits of that with the aerodynamics and so forth, the fuel savings and whatnot. Judy, I'll give you the last question before we wrap up. So, and I, I want to make sure I have a good last question. One, <laughs> one, one of the, the pressure things, on it, you, yeah. you did put the pressure on me, but one of the things that I look at with IoT and how it's changing business is the fact that we're moving away from a product related business and to a service. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of the future in business is going to be service related. How do people use the data to change their services? And I think that's very true in supply chain management also. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the company that comes out with the next product. It's the company who figures out how to use all the data right. available to really provide new services. So what are some of those new services that we're going to be looking for in uh, supply chain? I think, it, I think it all lands on the word insight. And if, you don't, if you're not catching data and you're not correlating that data and using things like machine learning to look at causality and, and uh, kind of explore things you never knew, questions you never knew to ask, uh, you're going to miss out on opportunity. So if, you, if you're not engaging IoT and you're not getting the insight you need for your business, you're probably not getting open doors to opportunity, uh, which means you're probably sitting still, and that's probably yeah. not a good place to be yeah. in the world of tech today. Yeah. Well, with that, we'll put a wrap on another edition of the new Crossroads. Jamie Lee, Vice President of IT and CIO at Wabash National Corporation. Thanks for some great insights. Thank Thanks for all you do at Wabash National. It continues to be a real Indiana success story, so we appreciate you being here. It's a great company. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. And for Judy Oakenfuss, uh, Managing Partner at Ice Miller and Lead of the uh, IoT Leadership uh, or Information Industry Group, I should say. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for being here, as always. And again, thank you for being here. And don't forget to sign up uh, for the new Crossroads at iTunes and YouTube.